Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit's Blitz with me, Fujit. Now I'm going to warn you, this is a bit of a long video, it's a bit of a travel blog. It's about visiting Tankfest. I was lucky enough the past weekend to get on an aeroplane, fly all the way from Dubai to the UK, took over eight hours, whereby I was going to then visit Bovington Tank Museum and something called Tankfest. And this is footage of me flying over London as I'm about to land at Heathrow Airport. Now, it was going to be a special trip for me for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I was going back to my home country because I am actually English. I am from the UK. And secondly, when I was in the British Army, I had the chance to be based in Bovington for a short time. And I haven't been back to the place for all oh, a long time, almost 20 years to be exact. So it was a pretty special thing for me. I was looking forward to it. Not only that, I was going to get to meet up with people that I know in the game. The likes of Every Good Name Is Taken, Aminet, and who could forget the forehead himself, Meadsy, amongst others who we will get to. So we ended up rocking into Bovington, and that is the gate guard at Bovington Tank Museum. That's right. For those of you who are very eagle-eyed, that is an FV4005. It's actually not called that, it's called Second Stage, but that's what's there, and um, excuse my arm in the picture. Blame every good name is taken, he took that photo, not my fault. Later on the Friday, we had to go to the airport in Bournemouth and pick up this gentleman. This is Robert85, the Spanish streamer and YouTuber, who, <laughs> I have to say, doesn't speak a word of English, and I don't speak a word of Spanish, yet he remained with the biggest smile on his face from the moment he landed to the moment he took off. And we had a wild time together. He is a fantastic guy. So get out there. Even if you don't speak Spanish, you'll know what he's talking about. Go and find his channel and give him a like and a sub because he really deserves it. He is probably the most laid back chap I ever met. And there he is there at the World of Tanks stage at Bovington Museum. And as you can see, He's got that huge smile on his face. The smile that was on his face, as I say, from the moment he landed to the moment he left the UK. I mean, just a fantastic guy who we managed to communicate despite both of us not being able to speak. This is the rest of the crowd. We've got from right to left, every good name is taken, clearly myself, Amunet, bigger wave there, and the person taking the photo. That's uh, Lord Cantius from... I mean, it's clan. Really good lad. He drove us everywhere. He picked us all up. He was absolutely fantastic. And without him, our trip would have been very difficult indeed, to say the least. Here is me and every good name is taken. We're stood outside the Tiger 131. That's right, boys and girls. That's the tank you can get in the game. That's the tank I'm doing a giveaway on. That is the real Tiger 131. Interesting tank. I'm going to show you a video on that one. But uh, that's me and every couldn't resist the opportunities to stand outside that tank before I did the giveaway video. And here we have the crowd. Not the full crowd, I have to admit. Some, are, some people are missing. But from left to right, we have Bolt, Lord Cantius, Aminette, Stubbo. Right at the front, we have Robert85. Behind him, everybody recognises that face. It is Meadsy. I'm behind Meadsy. Next to me is Batman Buttman. Next to him is Ian Anne's Destroyer from the Clan Alba, and at the very end is Every Good Name Is Taken. Some notable exceptions missing, I mean, Jonty was there as well, along with a few others, but unfortunately we couldn't get them into this picture at the time. This is taken at the World of Tanks Blitz display at Bobbington Tank Museum, where we all had a fantastic time. Not gonna lie. Now, I mean, Blesser brought these strange things called stoop waffles, I believe, or something along those lines. Never heard of them before, never tried them before, and she uses them to bribe multiple people around Tankfest, including giving them as gifts to all of us lot. And you know what? They're really tasty and really enjoyable. So thank you for that, Ladybug. It's not all about the people from Blitz. Obviously, it's about tanks. It is a tank museum. And I didn't take lots and lots of pictures, to be perfectly honest with you. But here's one. This is a Jag Tiger. The Tiger you find at Tier 9, the German tank destroyer in the game. Uh, this one's looking a bit worse for wear because it had its running gear shot away during the war. But it is an impressive beast of a tank in real life. Just like it is at Tier 9 in the game. Not too far away from this beastie is this tank. 
This is a Panzer IV. Now, the Panzer IV was one of the most produced tanks during World War II. Not the most produced, that was the Stug, but this is one of the most produced. And Bobbington has a very, very nice display vehicle of a Panzer IV. It's a shame that in the game, it's a bit of a meh tank, you know, that sort of lingers down in the bottom tiers. And the game really doesn't give this tank justice, unfortunately, for this tank. Historically, it was a fantastic tank. Not so in the game, I'm afraid. We then move around to another tank, which is very famous. This is the Panther. I believe this is a Panther D. I'm not sure. I can't remember. And the reason I say that is because it doesn't have like this stepped mantle on the, at the gun, uh, and it does, which which would make it a Panther G, and it doesn't have the driver's port in the upper hull, which would make it a Panther A. But this is a fine example of a Panther in very strange end of war 1945 colour scheme. So the Germans at the end of the war really didn't camouflage their tanks anymore. And the red you see is actually the primer. So all they've done, they've left the primer on and they sprayed over it with what they call Dunkelgaub, which is like a, 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 like a dark yellowish colour. Beautiful tank. And when you see it up close and personal, Again, the game really doesn't do this tank justice. Not really. This was a formidable tank. Okay, it did have a few teething problems and it broke down a lot in real life. But once they got that fixed, it was a formidable beast. Moving through the museum, we come across this tank. This, some of you should recognize, is a KV-1. Now, this is an original KV-1, but this is not the original paint scheme. The people at Bovington Tank Museum actually painted it like this. So it never came in this white wash with all this Cyrillic writing on it. It was actually done after the war by the museum staff. It actually came in a, in a greenish color and they repainted it to make it look a bit more authentic, giving it that, you know, Russian front type look. An impressive tank and boy, it really does have some armor in real life. Pretty much like the game and like the game, it is a monster of a tank and it really does have a bad gun because it's only a 76 mil I believe so interesting tank though nice and big and a beautiful beautiful condition although it is residing in like a warehouse now in the tank museum rather than in the main display I mean when you walk around this area of the museum it's really interesting because they got some really really funky tanks like this tank this is the AMX 30B. Now, a lot of people don't believe that this tank actually resides in real life. It does. That is it there. It is in the game in tier 10, as you know, the AMX 30B. And as you can see, in real life, it has a huge top-headed cupola. So any of you think that the AMX 30B is a tank that doesn't exist? Well, there you go. There's a picture of it. It does exist. It's real. And it really did have a massive cupola, just like the game. Now I'm going to have a look at another tank that a lot of people don't think exists. This is the M103, the tier 9 American heavy tank. And again, a lot of people think that this tank doesn't exist. It was like, it, it's a made up tank. It's actually not. There it is. There's a picture of it in Bovington, in the vehicle conservation area where a lot of the more unique tanks reside. And Trust me, it is a beast of a tank. I mean, it's a whopper. You can see how big that turret is compared to the hull. I mean, it really is stonkingly big. And it really took me by surprise how big this tank actually was. We're going to move to another unique tank. Now, this in the game is known as the Badger. This is what the Badger effectively is. It's actually not a Badger. It's a Chieftain test bed. So what they did, the British Army, they well, well, not the British Army, the British development people, they decided to try and like sort of convert a chieftain into a tank destroyer. And that's what they ended up with. Now, we have it in the game as a badger. And as you can see, the game and the real thing don't look like anything like each other. And you can see there from the vehicle statistics, it's a dummy gun. Now, I'd love to show you the tank, but it's kind of in bits um, sat in the conservation area at Bovington Tank Museum. But that is what a Badger really would have looked like. Going back to the AMX 30B, get a bit of a wider shot of here of it here, so you can see how sleek it is. And believe me, in real life, it is a beautiful tank. 
the the lines on it are amazing and it really does look like it is fast and furious think of the leo one type tank and again i think the game does a good representation of it but doesn't really give it that much justice and i love the paintwork on this tank and i, I love the way it looks it is a prototype not gonna lie it, it never really saw you know mass production as such but it's a beautiful tank and you know it's great that we have it in the game although some people think it does need a buff and i'm one of those people but what to do it's up to wargaming to buff it not me we're staying again in the conservation area and nestled amongst a load of bits and bobs is just poking over the top this little tank this is the black prince you know the tank that has wickedly good armor and an amazingly fast reload it's a real tank it really did exist that is it there you can't get to it unfortunately it's sort of nestled in amongst a load of other tanks and bits and bobs but i just wanted to show you that the black prince does exist it's a real thing there it is there so again it's not a churchill a lot of people think it's a churchill it's not it really is just called the black prince because it's made by a completely different company to that of the churchill as I said, Bovington has some weird and wonderful tanks. And this one in the middle, the one that I'm trying to show you, those of you eagle-eyed enough will recognize that tank. That is the Conway, the Tier 9 British tank destroyer. Again, it really existed. There it is. In Bovington, they also have a charioteer and a challenger. Unfortunately, I don't have any pictures of those. I know Robert85 does, but I don't, unfortunately because they were just too difficult to get a hold of. They were nestled amongst other things, and Robert had his telescopic um, selfie stick with him, so he was able to get some good photos. Next to the Conway, with its gun in the air, is actually the FV-4202, another tank that really exists. So in this picture, you've got closest to us, the FV-4202, and just next to that is the Conway two amazing tanks clearly the fv4202 is a tier 10 british medium and it really did exist guys okay it was a test bed that led to different tanks but it really did exist talking about other tanks that existed there's this sorry little beastie this is the churchill game carrier unfortunately we couldn't get to it so this is all i can show you and it really is looking sorry for itself with its tracks dumped onto its casemate turret sitting there rusting away next to the museum they will get around to conserving it one day but just not just yet it's a damn shame because the churchill gun carrier really or game carrier as everybody likes to call it really did exist that is it there uh, unfortunately it's just a little bit too far for me to show you it in proper you know perspective but it did exist guys and there it is another tank existed is this the tog 2 everybody loves a tog 2 i know i do so those of you who doubt that the Tog 2 existed, that's it there. It resides in the cafeteria at the Tank Museum. So this is one of the videos I took inside the museum. This is a Matilda, one of the Matildas we're in the game. Very heavily armoured with a fast pew-pew gun. This is a Matilda there. And this is a load of the degenerates that I was hanging around with. That is Lord Cantius. And just coming into shot now is Stubbo. Uh, every good name is taken. There is Jonty. And of course, really Ian and reprobates. Destroyer. Um, we just have a bit of fun yeah. in the photo. See, the Matilda looks big. It's not bad. <laughs> and then move into the arena, and this is the Japanese Hei Gao. This is a tank we do have in the game, and they really did exist. There is one there. And, it, you know, it's a fast little tank, very lightly armoured, however. As I said, I didn't get to show you every single tank that was there. This is a British Stuart. This is the M5 Stuart. The, the British actually took them and converted them and then used them in the desert. And this is what the tank really looks like. And as you can see, it's quite small and dainty. But boy, does it have a turn of speed. We then move through after this tank and we're going to look at a Valentine. This is a Valentine 2 that you get in the game. However, this is what we call a D version dd stands for duplex drive you can see it's got this skirt around it now that skirt would come up and, and allow it to go well turn into a boat basically 
And when you see the rear, you will see the propellers that drive it through the water. They were basically uh, invented for D-Day, and eventually most of them didn't happen on the Valentine, it happened on the Sherman. But pretty funky tank to say the least. And again, we do get the Valentine in the game, just not this type of Valentine. This is the star of the show for some people, especially every good name is taken. This is the American Hellcat. Now, the Hellcat is an interesting tank. In real life, it is actually a tank destroyer. And the way the Americans approached tank destroyers, they wanted them fast and light and quick and nimble. Hence the reason why the Hellcat is this like little compactish tank. It's got a very wide open turret. There's no turret hatches and it was basically meant to be a tank destroyer but in real life it, it didn't really suit that role so the americans used it more as a light tank and a reconnaissance tank it's a fantastic tank and it was a real pleasure to see i would never seen one in real life to be honest with you so i was interested in seeing this tank to see what it actually looks like and what it sounds like and you can see here i mean it's a beautiful little tank And it's got a lovely sounding engine. Now there was one of our group who was absolutely made up to see this tank and that's in there. Every good name is taken. The Hellcat is his favourite tank in the game. He's got so many camos for it, it's unbelievable. And now he gets to see it in real life. And boy, was he a happy bunny. And of course, we couldn't resist taking a photo with him next to his favourite tank, looking all chuffed. Um, I don't know if he's got that camo for the tank though. That's a sad thing, isn't it? He needs to get that camo. And I think he's after that legendary camo and he's pressing wargaming as much as possible. But hey. Moving on from the Howcat, we have this tank. This is the T-3485. We do get this in the game and it's a unique tank. It's one of the most vastly produced tanks of World War II. I mean, the Soviets churned these out as like they were going out of fashion. And there were literally hundreds of thousands of these damn things. Now, the unique thing about this tank is its tracks. It, it, you, you know, you can't, if you can probably hear this clunk, clunk, clunk. That's because the track pins are hitting the drive sprocket every time. And the drive sprocket is knocking the track pin back in. And over time, it just wears the tracks out and they all fall apart. The other thing about it is it's not the easiest of tanks to drive. You can see it's a very jerky tank. It's because you've got to drive in straight lines. You can't, it's, it's not like normal tanks where you pull the stick up and it sort of does a curve. This one only drives in straight lines. I've never seen a T-34 moving in real life. This was the first time I'd ever seen one. And the, the noise of this thing is, is, is deafening to be fair. And you can understand in World War II when you could hear the rumble of the tracks in the track pins, how it could put like the fear of God into people. Because it is. A pretty noisy tank. And the other thing you'll notice that it churns out a lot of smoke. It's not like you're not going to hear or see this thing from a long distance because you really will. And that's one of the sad things about World of Tanks, to be honest with you. We don't have this noise replicated in the game. And I really think we should. This would be fantastic if we could have the same type of noise. Obviously, I don't want the same type of mobility, it would be a nightmare. But that's the T-3485. Following on from the T-3485, which is just leaving the arena here, there, well, then we have the Allied tanks. 
with the Shermans, basically. Now, there, there were four Shermans. There's the American Sherman that's coming out first. Just behind that is the Sherman that was used in the film Fury. Now, a lot of people think it's a Sherman HVSS. It's not. It's just got that running gear. It's actually not a Sherman HVSS. It's, a, it's an early war Sherman, but with a different running gear. This is, the, this is the actual Sherman used in the film Fury. And it's still made up as if it was in that film. And I've never seen it, and I think it's a fantastic tank. This is the Sherman 5, I believe. This is the British version of the Sherman used in World War II. And the Sherman was the most popular and the most produced Allied tank of the war. I mean, the Americans knocked these things out left, right, and center. And as you can see, here they are coming in procession. We've got the American Sherman coming up. That's the Cast Hall Sherman, the earliest of the Shermans, where the others are not a cast. That is completely cast hall, which is why it's got this round um, thing on the hull there. It looks sort of very rounded, lovely curves. Whereas if you look at the Fury, it's very flat and straight. So the Shermans were are always a star of the show, I'm led to believe, because there's so many of them out there. And it was a real treat for me to see this particular tank, the Sherman Fury, the actual tank from the actual movie, still made up as if it was in the movie. And no doubt you'll agree with me, it looks a beautiful tank side on. Anyway, after the Shermans, we pop back into the museum to have a look at some more tanks over there. And this is the walk around of that Panther I showed you earlier. So those of you out there who like making models, hopefully you can get some references from this. It's a beautiful tank, bigger than you think, um, quite an impressive tank. And you can see there the, the this suspension and this running gear that they've got. We then move on to the Tiger 131. Now I said I'd tell you a little bit more about this. This Tiger 131 was captured completely intact by the British at the at, at, in World War II. And it's one of the earliest production Tigers and it still has absolutely everything on it that is original. Um, when they captured it, it had like only about like 50 kilometers on the clock. So the tracks, the running gear, everything you see is all original. Nothing is being replaced. Now this one has been restored to working order and it does run. And it's an amazing tank to, to, to consider that this was like the pinnacle of German engineering at the time, their, their, their most anticipated main battle tank. And it was captured so easily and fully intact. I mean, that is just amazing. And it's awesome to see this. I mean, you can see what the engineering went into this and you see how big of a beast it is. And then you get to understand why the tiger in the game is so formidable. We're now going to jump back into the arena, and this is the post-war tank display. Um, there's quite a few tanks going around here, but the one that really perked our interest wasn't the Chieftain, then the Challenger, or the M60. It was the tanks at the front. Now, the third front tank is a Scorpion. That's a British tank, and I've actually driven one of those. But the tank just behind it is an AMX-13. Now. The driver of that tank, we had a really long conversation, and that tank not only is designed to sort of destroy the enemy, it seems to be designed to destroy the crew as well. For example, it can decapitate the driver. There is a Centurion, we have those in the game, as you know. It's a beautiful tank in real life. Um, that's a Swiss version, it was sold by the British to the Swiss. That there is, I can't remember, <laughs> to be honest with you, that is a Leopard a1 A1. No, Leopard 1 A1. Beautiful tank. It came from the Leo one. That's a T-59. That's the Chinese version of the T-55. That's the Scorpion you can hear. I don't know if you can hear it properly, but it's very low. And this is the star of the show for me. AMX-13. It's actually been fitted with a Leopard 1 gun. That has then been rotated 90 degrees, chopped in half and shoved into the turret. It's an auto loader in real life with nine shells either side of the turret. Here comes the Centurion, beautiful tank, big and boxy. As I said, this is the Swiss version. So it's a little bit different, not too much different to the British version, but it is a little bit different. But we do get this tank 
And uh, there we have, and again, I've forgotten what that is. Um, I believe it's a, it's a Swedish tank, but for the life of me, I cannot remember what it is. Um, that's really bad of me. Here's the, the Leopard 1A1. That was the production after the Leo one, which was a prototype. And there we have the T-59. It's got 59 written on the side. It's basically a Soviet T-55 turned out into a T-59 on the license. That is the M60. The tank that you get in the game at tier 10, that caused a lot of controversy. And uh, that was it there. This is a Chieftain Still Brew, a later version of the Chieftain. I've driven one of those. This is a T-72. This is a Polish T-72 made on the license, but following the same designs as the Soviet T-72. And behind that, which I don't think I show, you know, I do show it, that is a Challenger 1 used to be a main British battle tank, but it was actually designed to be sold to the Iranians. Uh, it used to be, it was derived from a tank with the Shah. The irony is, I mean, I, the noise of these tanks are amazing, and here's, here comes the, the Type 59, a tank we do have in the game, so again, it's not made up, it really does exist, there it is there, running around, and as I said, it's based on the T-54 stroke T-55, there are subtle differences between the two, but not much, and there's a bit of a closer look of a T-72, which is a really noisy tank and very low profile, but as I said, this was the star of the show. Now, the driver said to me that unfortunately he wasn't allowed to open up the throttle on this thing, because it really does fly around the, the arena, and the thing is, if you can see just behind him, there's like a hatch stood up. He was saying that the turret, because it's an oscillating turret, that means the gun is fixed inside the turret, and it, it, you know, it, it doesn't sort of go up and down, it oscillates with the turret. It can actually decapitate the driver if the turret turns too quickly. I mean, that is just mad. <laughs> it's a tank that wants to kill its own crew, basically. And he said it's noisy, it's uncomfortable, it's hot, and it's incredibly dangerous for the crew. Well, it's a beautiful little tank. It's just a damn shame he wasn't able to open the throttle. We then move on to a, a, a tank that I absolutely adore. I think it's a beautiful tank. This is the Leopard 1A1. Now, this is derived from the Leo 1, the tank we have in the game. The Leo 1 is the prototype. There is one in the tank museum. It's a beautiful tank. It's got a beautiful sounding engine, really sleek lines, and it moves around the battlefield here, in this case, the arena, so elegantly. I mean, it's just a beauty of a tank. You can see why the Leo 1 in the game is such a formidable tank. So now we're seeing the T-72 here going through its paces. As I said, this is a Polish version. That basically means that it was built in Poland on the license from the, uh, from the Soviets. But the, the reason I want to show you this tank is because you get an idea. Now, the T-72 was the next one up from the T-62A, the tank that we do have in the game. And the Object 140, funnily enough, is the prototype of the T-62A in real terms. Now, the thing about this tank is you can see how low and how sleek it is. It is an autoloader in real life, which frees up that turret, which is really, really small. But it's unbelievably noisy. It's a very fast tank, don't get me wrong. It's not a heavy tank. The Russians, the Soviets don't believe in heavy tanks. The IS-7 was basically their last attempt at a uh, heavy tank and they didn't, it didn't work out. So they went to this medium route. And um, virtually all their tanks after the IS-7 are all medium tanks. And um, this is where you get a really close view of the T-72. As you can see, it's noisy and it churns out a lot of smoke. But it's a beautiful tank to look at, I'm not gonna lie.
The last one, but by no means the least, is this little beastie. This is the Challenger 1. It used to be the mainstay British battle tank. As I said, it was never meant to be British. It was derived from a tank that was going to go to the Shah of Iran before the Islamic Revolution. It was called the Shah. The, the, the Islamic Revolution happened. The Shah was deposed. So the British changed it around a bit and made it the uh, Challenger 1, which saw action in the first Gulf War. And I've driven one. They're really funky. And then, all too quickly, the visit was over. Three days fly nowadays, unfortunately. But I enjoyed every moment of it. It was fantastic. You know, it was great to meet all these people who I have sort of collaborated with here on streams, who I've met in the game, who I've spoken to. And, you know, I, I've, I've had a fantastic time at, what, uh, at Tank Fest. There are a few notable exceptions to the gang here, and one of those exceptions is World of Tanks Blitz Joe, who most of you should know. Um, he's got something like 120,000 subscribers, he does some fantastic videos, he's a much better YouTuber than me. He was with us, he was hanging around with us, um, but every time we tried to take a photo, he wasn't there, he seemed to vanish. But he's a fantastic chap in real life, really good fun, we had some great times at World of Tanks. You just don't get to see him, unfortunately, for you lot. But, uh, you know, every time the cameras came out, Joe vanished. And it, that's just the way it happened. I loved every moment of it, to be honest with you. And I thought it was really, really brilliant. So that's my little blog on it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry it's a bit of a long video. But, uh, you know, these things can't be helped. I hope you enjoyed that. By all means, comment everything below. And until the next time, guys, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield. And happy tanking. Because that is what it's all about, having fun and being happy.